So let's officially get started then this afternoon. Um, I am Tracy Miller, and I'm here presenting feedback strategies for your online course. And I am the online teaching coordinator in the Faculty Development Instructional Design Center here at Northern. And this is actually the, the first time we're presenting this workshop. And uh, it's been, it's sort of a passion of mine, I think, that um, giving feedback to your students is, is sort of the, um, a, you know, a very important part of online teaching. So I'm excited to be sharing some things with you today. Uh, so what I hope that you sort of get out of this is that you'll discover some practical strategies on how to plan your feedback to students um, and also to provide your students with opportunities um, to give each other feedback and then allow for the students to have um, some self-reflection, um, which I'm kind of um, terming as feedback to self. Um, so that's how I'm going to kind of break up the, um, the workshop. And I'm going to spend the majority of the time um, talking about feedback that faculty and instructors can give to their students, be, because that's probably what you're most interested in. Um, so if you've been following along with this idea of quality online teaching and learning um, that's kind of been evolving over um, many years here at NIU, but specifically over the last year, we've been really concentrating um, on online teaching and learning um, in a quality matter. You might have come to some of our quality online course series webinars. I definitely see some familiar names out there, so I know you have. Um, we've really been talking a lot about course design. In this case, we're going to be talking about, uh, the majority of it's going to be talking about, about course delivery. So what's happening when you're actually um, in the course with your students and you're delivering content, content and you're interacting with your students, um, which is why I think feedback is, is just such an important part um, of that delivery process. So like I said, we're going to start off by talking about um, specifically about faculty from uh, feedback from the faculty. So this is the type of feedback that you can give to your students um, as the course is being delivered. And uh, I took a little bit of information from our Quality Matters rubric um, that NIU has adopted as a way of measuring quality in online courses. And they have what they call a helpful recommendation. I'm calling this helpful feedback. And it's um, kind of a structure that I like to think about um, when I'm creating um, any kind of feedback, really, um, whether I'm just giving advice to my children or whether um, um, giving colleagues um, some feedback on some work that they're working on, I kind of break it down into these different components. And so I start with um, giving them um, in my feedback some kind of evidence so they know exactly um, what I'm talking about um, when I say great job. Okay, that's the, the, the um, most basic sort of feedback, you know. Yeah, that sounds great, great job. Um, and so I want to be a, um, provide them with a little bit more evidence by what I mean about what's great. And so it may be tied to my expectations. Uh, I have already defined what I mean by, by a great body of work. And so I want to be specific. Um, in this particular instance, you really did a good job on addressing um, this very important concept um, that I was looking at. And then very specific to their work. Um, if it's a, uh, a, a paper, let's say, a research paper, um, I don't want to just say um, great job overall. I want to provide them evidence of exactly what I thought um, was, was great in their project. And we're going to kind of dig into those a little bit more, um, more deeply as we go on. Um, balanced. So um, this is another um, what I consider a life strategy. So um, this idea of a feedback sandwich, that you're taking something and you're starting with something really um, positive 
and then you're giving something um, that's maybe more instructive or constructive um, on ways for them to improve the work. And then maybe you end it again with something a little bit more positive. Um, uh, helps the students understand that you care and definitely makes um, it a little bit more palatable uh, when they're receiving feedback. And then finally, um, feedback should be measurable in some way. And so that's giving um, students some way that when they have made some attempt at um, improving their work or moving forward, um, that you know that they've incorporated your feedback into improving that body of work. Like I said, I'm going to dig a little bit more deeply into all of these and kind of give you some concrete examples of what I mean. And this is also where I am expecting a little bit of participation on your part. Um, so if you've been reading emails during my introduction, time to pay attention. Um, so what I'm showing here on the screen is actually um, what I mean by a helpful recommendation, but it's also um, an innovative tool that I think that's in Blackboard. And this is inline grading. And so this allows um, an instructor to um, mock up or mark up or annotate um, on the student's body of work, and they'll be able to see this. It's very similar to um, using the review panel if you're in a Word document. And so um, please try it out if you haven't. Uh, it's a great way to provide um, your students with feedback um, in a way maybe you hadn't thought of um, when you're thinking about doing this online. It's probably something you've done for years um, and face to face, but you have that ability to do it online too. So what I love about this one is it really allows you to look at, uh, point out the evidence. What do you specifically mean? So you can do that by, um, you know, some of the tools I've used here where I've actually drawn a circle around the purpose. And so when I write the comment over on the side that says, please provide more detail, I'm saying please provide more detail regarding purpose. And so I'm trying to be um, really um, specific about what I'm talking about. Um, there's also um, using the highlighter tool. And the highlighter tool is um, nice when um, you may maybe want to color code it. So there might be um, different um, levels. So maybe green means um, I like this part, and maybe yellow means um, maybe this needs a little bit more work. So I kind of like the color coding option. Um, and then, of course, you can easily add some um, thoughts over here on the side, and again, pointing directly to what you're talking about. Um, Isabel says, so it does not apply to the discussion board. Um, yeah, discussion board um, does not have this inline, inline grading feature. It's more, it could be used for a Word document, a PDF, a spreadsheet, a PowerPoint. Um, it's, so it does have a lot of um, different ways that students can submit their work to you. Um, and you can always look at it in sort of its natural environment. So you can like download it and look at a PowerPoint presentation um, in PowerPoint and um, work with it that way too. Um, yes, you can use it with um, SafeAssign also, Isabel. Um, so I want your theory on though, what is missing from this particular kind of feedback? and um, if you want to kind of look at it quickly, I'll remind you that I was looking for evidence in my feedback. I wanted it to be balanced, and I also wanted it to be measurable. So how can I, in more specifics? Yes, Isabel. I think when I say please provide more detail, um, what is more and what kind of details am I looking for? more specific questions. Yes, and I love using questions um, to kind of 
um, further the student's thinking. So um, in the case where I said, what do you think the goals were? Um, I might have been more specific on the number of goals I wanted. That would have made it um, measurable um, or uh, even um, expanded a little bit further, ask a couple other que more questions about it. Todd said matching comments to the rubric. Todd, why do I feel like you often are the ones that gives me the segue into the next slide? <laughs> Um, I would definitely encourage everyone to use the Blackboard's interactive rubric. You can also refer, uh, refer back to your own rubric um, if it's something that you've um, just posted as a PDF or it's something that you're referring to um, in your syllabus, perhaps. And what I love about a rubric is you're setting up those expectations. And when you're letting students um, know, get, providing them with feedback, and you want to say, you know, this is why maybe um, you didn't get the grade that you were expecting. You can point to that evidence, which is your rubric on what your expectations were. The thing I love about Blackboard Interactive Rubrics is um, if you have a lot of grading to do, um, this will allow you to um, move through the grading uh, quickly, and there's a certain level of feedback that's sort of automated at that point because um, it's, you know, clear here that in this case um, we're talking about the students exceeding the, the expectations specific to the amount of um, really words they put into it because we're saying substantive. So, you know, we're, we're being specific. Um, in this case, it's exceeding our expectations. Um, and so we can kind of acknowledge that. Um, but then maybe if they weren't quite uh, meeting expectations or there was something that we could give them to improve it, we can use the feedback at the bottom to be more personalized and more specific. Um, in those cases where um, it's more important that they have some sort of instructive feedback. And please keep uh, chiming in with these ideas. I love hearing about um, what others are doing um, in their courses. Um, I always learn from these workshops. So um, I hope everyone can kind of give each other feedback as we go through this um, workshop together. Um, so. One of the other things I like to do to save time is to start to create this bank of common feedback phrases. And so again, that's going to be a time saver um, when I do have a lot of grading to do. Uh, but I still want to make sure that it's not missing um, those components um, so that the students can really learn from them and uh, improve their work over time. And so I've got some examples here. And um, I've got sort of the, the more positive ones. And I think positive ones um, may seem easy. But I think uh, we need to challenge ourselves to always provide um, a little bit more um, feedback, again, so they know exactly what we're talking about, maybe to bring them even um, beyond that level. Um, and then constructive. Um, and definitely in the constructive um, one, we might even want to fold in some more of that feedback sandwich um, in order um, for the students to really understand that, you know, we're coming from a place where um, our, our feedback is judgmental, um, but we want it to be um, constructive and something that um, encourages them to improve their work. So um, if you can add to the text chat area, um, some with my examples up here, and common feedback phrases um, where you think um, I've really provided some evidence uh, about what I'm talking about in my feedback. And in, in some ways, you can kind of dream this up. So if you want to use your, uh, your own instance of um, maybe a project that you've um, worked out, you know, my first example, great work on outlining the project, maybe picture one of your own um, projects in your head. So how do you think I was really um, providing students evidence here? And maybe I'm not. Maybe I missed the mark. Oh. 
Okay, I am patiently waiting, but I am not seeing any activity. So I'll try to get the ball rolling here. Um, oh, Autumn, good, you were just typing a lot. <laughs> Autumn said, in noting citations, you note that this will not only help in this assignment, but in assignments going forward. I think this helps students understand what is expected. Thank you, good point. Um, this is something that is not only important, um, like you said, in this assignment, but a real um, life skill for um, students in this sort of environment, so absolutely. Um, I like that the two top com you like the two top comments best. You provided a comment and an explanation for the comments. Yes, um, I tried to, you know, think about how I can um, mix these common phrases up a little bit too. So uh, in that first one, um, great work outlining the project. I'm seeing improvement in identifying key concepts. In a different instance, I might say, I can see improvement in um, your overall structure of the outline. Or, you know, I can kind of mix in those other phrases. Um, Isabel said, follow-up questions to guide the students to dig deeper are also useful. I like the second one on the right. Um, yes, so that would be, um, could you expand on this idea of reconstruction and include an example? Um, and since our conversation is already flowing in that direction, um, I really felt that adding the including example would um, be measurable. So when the students um, submitted their next piece of work or maybe a final piece of work, um, I would be looking for that example. And to me, that would be measurable that um, they've made improvements. Uh, many years ago at a leadership sure, bleh, workshop, one of the speakers suggested using PSP, praise, suggestion, and praise. Um, we had something positive than good constructed feedback. Yeah, a different word for the feedback um, sandwich. Um, and, I, you know, it works, it works on husbands, it works on uh, bosses. So, you know, this is, this is a life skill that um, I think, you know, lead softly um, and then give that constructive um, feedback and then end on a positive note too. Um, we did talk about um, evidence and now we've talked about balance and we've talked about measurable. Um, so great job on giving plenty of feedback. Um, and again, the idea is to keep these um, common feedback phrases um, somewhere in a bank um, folder on your um, desktop, something like that. Um, and then you can keep building on it. So um, if you take some time and you create that, that winner, um, don't lose it. Put it in that bank um, for the next time. Okay, so we're going to try to improve um, some of these um, feedback phrases. Um, and again, use your imagination, dream up a scenario um, that maybe you've come across, um, and see if we can improve um, some of these feedback phrases. Um, and um, we, you don't have to do all three. Um, pick one and just um, think about um, invent some sort of evidence um, and make sure it's balanced and maybe have a suggestion on um, that will allow the students to know exactly what they no need to do um, to improve their work. So the three phrases are, this work is just average. I expected more from you at this point in the course and great job on your speech. Okay, Autumn suggests, great job on your speech. The examples that you use when comparing and contrasting locations were concise, clear, and well explained. Yes, and that would be go beautifully um, with a rubric. Actually, Autumn, did I just give you feedback that was measurable? If you suggested um, referring to the 
the rubric and some sort of measurable improvement, your grade could go up five more points um, if you did this. Todd, number three, um, content-rich speech. Incorporate it outside the content into your topic. Just make the flow around the room to help facilitate student interaction. Yes, so it sounded like their content um, was really great. Uh, the one area that could use a little bit of improvement um, was bringing the audience into the flow a little bit more. Great suggestion. And you could see that. You know, the, the next speech, or maybe this was a um, practice speech, the next one, um, they would definitely incorporate that into their, their practice. OK, we'll keep those coming. Um, but we're going to move on a little bit. Um, so in a different direction. Um, so here are some other of those feedback strategies. And um, one of them is to make sure that you let your students know up front um, how you're going to provide feedback to them and when you're going to do it. And in this example, uh, I've told students that their grades will be posted um, three days after the due date. And so hopefully they're not, um, you know, they're not bugging me for feedback um, before those three days. But I've also uh, made a commitment to them and to myself that something is going to be graded um, within three days. Um, and you know that can be anything that you decide on, but it's something that you know you should commit to um, so your students um, aren't bugging you, but they also have that feedback that they need. Um, to move forward with the other content, especially if the content is um, building or scaffolding um, to some, some other content or assessment. OK, so um, Bill's suggestion, just going back to improving um, the feedback, you enunciated clearly. Oh, I'm so glad I enunciated that clearly. And the pace was just right for understanding. The content developed logically. You could incorporate information about the next steps to take. Yeah, that's, that's got a lot of um, meaningful detail in there. Um, and I think it, the, the idea of um, the way the content developed logically um, really showed them that their pacing was, uh, was done well. So good job. Oh, I should say more than good job. Your explanation was a very clear, and I'm looking forward to seeing more. OK, so this is an interesting one um, that I actually um, kind of thought about at the last minute, but it's kind of important. Um, you really need to tell your students how to find their feedback. and. Um, it, because it can be sort of buried. They don't realize that they can um, look at their grade and then open up the assignment and see all of that inline grading, all that great feedback that you've incorporated in there. Um, and whatever it is, um, just letting them know um, where they can find it. So we just talked about sort of um, how and when they could find it. And um, you need to explain to them also about um, where they go to find it. And so I pulled up this um, page. And you can add this to your courses. And um, this is actually a tutorial that Blackboard's put together. And so it's nothing that you necessarily need to create. You can just link to the how to check your grades. Um, and Blackboard will walk them through the steps for you. So. That is just kind of a, a helpful tip there. Do I have the URL? Um, I do. It's actually a YouTube video. So um, it kind of walks them through it nicely and you know gives them that visual of exactly what they need to click on. So that's kind of helpful. 
Okay, so some just ideas or strategies on um, ways that um, you can provide these opportunities for students to receive feedback for you, from you. Um, definitely sort of formative in nature. Um, one is to create a draft assignment. So, um, you know, draft paper, um, practice speech, something that will allow them to receive that formative feedback um, before they give you sort of their, their best product. Um, whole course feedback. So um, maybe it's something that you're noticing that um, several students are doing. And so you can create um, an announcement saying, you know, I've been, um, I've been grading things, and here are some general feedback that I'd like to give the whole course. Um, and then I'd like to hear your ideas. So again, anything that you've used um, that maybe we haven't shared yet, um, please add them to the text chat area. Um, we'd love to hear about them. And then I can add them to my next iteration of um, feedback. OK, so we're going to switch gears a little bit. Um, we're going to talk about feedback from others. And so one of the sort of most obvious ones would be um, feedback from, um, oh, Stephanie's got a suggestion. Use the Blackboard Grader app for grading assignments. You can annotate, add text annotations, and record audio feedback. Yes, how cool is that? Um, and it's currently on iPad only. I know you've tested it, Stephanie, and um, it, I, I can't wait for it to be used more widely. Um, so feedback um, from other students. If there's ways that you can provide that, um, for the students, for each other, um, it's something that should be encouraged. And I think sometimes we we worry a little bit that um, somehow that's being um, dishonest. But really, if students can help, uh, you know, can you review um, this paper before I submit it? Or um, I'm going to throw out a, a discussion or a blog, and I'm going to write out my outline or some big ideas that I want to do for this assignment. Um, allow the students to be able to um, give each other that feedback. Um, and then you could also use experts. So if you have an, an expert in the field, um, or if they have resources that they can go to and say, hey, you know, can you give me some feedback on this assignment? Um, that is definitely something that will improve their work. So um, I just talked about they could kind of post their ideas up on a blog or perhaps a wiki. Um, you could definitely use um, Blackboard tools for that, or you can use other tools. Um, I always like to sort of introduce you possibly to something new. Um, so I kind of um, pulled out VoiceThread for this particular example. Um, it's something that I've used um, a couple times. and. Um, there, I believe there's a, um, a subscription sort of atmosphere where you um, subscribe to VoiceThread. Um, but if you think it's something that would be um, valuable to your students, you know, try it out, see if you like it. But basically what you can do is you can upload a PowerPoint presentation or a presentation of some sort to this VoiceThread. And you can add your voice to it. So you're sort of narrating over the PowerPoint. Maybe you're preparing, uh, your students are preparing for a presentation. And you can see down at the bottom, um, there's different ways they can call in and add their voice to the PowerPoint. Um, most um, different devices and computers have um, built-in microphones and things like that now. So there's a variety of ways that the students can add of their voice to their PowerPoint. But the interesting thing about uh, VoiceThread is you can invite others to collaborate with you, and they can watch your presentation and give you um, feedback um, sort of directly on the slide that you're in. And uh, they can do that. Um, I, I kind of think that to not cloud the voice, um, they can do that by adding maybe some text. So it's, it's being very specific because you're in a specific slide and you're saying, OK, um, that point was maybe a little unclear. Um, could you um, 
be a little bit more specific or um, come at it from a different angle or something like that. But um, a kind of interesting way um, to let students do that. And then there's other um, annotation and editing tools that um, students or peers can use with each other, whether it's sharing a Google Doc or um, even just emailing a Word document and saying, hey, can you kind of take a look at this? Um, I could I could use um, you know does this make sense to you when you read it kind of kind of feedback okay now if you do use um, groups for some of your activities um, that is a natural way to kind of um, incorporate some student to student um, feedback and I've kind of added some of the group tools that are already in Blackboard. Um, and so whether that's, um, again, collaborating on a document um, or any of the other sort of tools um, in Blackboard, um, you're kind of saying, OK, here's your group. And um, this is the type of feedback that you should be providing for each other. But you may want to use a uh, group contract for that. And so that group contract may include some of those recommendations that I had earlier with, um, you know, if you're going to give me feedback, um, I want to know that evidence. I want it to be balanced. And I want it um, to be measurable so I know how to make improvements. And um, that um, go over more smoothly and there will be more um, respect and camaraderie um, with the groups. Um, I would also suggest checkpoints. So maybe there's very specific times where the group should be um, giving each other feedback. And um, that might have to do a little bit with accountability. So um, maybe there's um, four different checkpoints that you're expecting um, feedback um, between the students. Um, and then somebody's going to submit the final version. So just kind of letting them know um, that there's kind of a timeline and um, to stick to it and um, there'll be a better group for it. Um, anything else that you can think of alternative um, tools that you've used um, for groups to be able to provide each other with feedback, um, we'd love to hear about. Um, does the university have a license for this software, Isabel's asking. Um, no, I know that there are certain groups that um, are using it, but it's not a um, license across the, the university. Um, and I also think that there's some um, limitations to it um, as far as um, you can only have um, so many things up there at once. And I'm sure there's probably different price points, too, for that. OK, here's some ideas to kind of wrap up this idea about um, students giving each other feedback. Um, and one is to do peer reviews or critiques. And I've added um, this picture in here about um, they're, they're kind of critiquing this artwork. Um, this is not new, um, especially in areas of the visual and performing arts, um, where um, this is a regular occurrence where students are expected to review and critique each other's work. And, um, and so I think we, we can kind of rely on some of the things that um, they've experienced um, over the years in this idea of peer review and critiques. Um, and I know, Isabel, you're in the arts. Um, Bill, you're in music. So anything that um, you can kind of share with us on, on how these peer reviews and critiques go, we'd love to hear about it. Um, and I also mentioned observations here. So um, you know, if you have the students pull out those rubrics that you created and um, say, hey, um, you know, I'm your peer in this class, and um, I've got the rubric here. This is how I would interpret it for you. Um, Isabel uh, does this in discussion boards, OK? So are they posting um, perhaps a, a body of work 
um, in their initial posts, and then students are um, giving their critique as their replies. And while Isabel's answering, Bill said, I asked the students performing to self-critique first, then peer critique finally. Good plan. And, um, and, and um, we're definitely going to talk about that self-critique a little bit. So um, maybe you'll have some more information on how you sort of structure that. And again, any other ideas that you have, um, please just add them to um, the text chat here. There's some really good information in there. So uh, builds happen to be my seg segue into the next um, element that I wanted to talk about. And that's uh, feedback from self. Um, and a, a lot of it has to do with reflection. And um, so I definitely want to dig into the um, different ways we can do reflection. Um, but because we are having such a rich discussion in the text chat, and I want to make sure I capture it for the recording, um, Erica says, I do self and peer reviews through the discussion board the week before the final papers are due. And Isabel said, I give them questions to choose from pertaining to artworks. OK, so um, all great, great suggestions. And I think we can even use some of these suggestions um, across the disciplines, too. So um, self and peer reviews through the discussion board the week before the final papers are due. Erica, how do you find um, that timeline works? Is a week before the final papers are due um, kind of the, the balance of, OK, we know that their, their product is pretty good right now, um, but still give them time to make those improvements? One week sounds like it. it would be a good good plan. So as they're sort of adding some information in there, um, so what uh, reflection? Um, one of the important things about asking your students um, to do a reflection is that you give them some intentional time to do that, and um, you know because time means value. So. It's not something that, oh, now I have to do this. Um, you're saying to them, I'm making this part of the plan, your self-reflection, your um, sort of feedback to yourself is, is so important that I've set aside some, um, some time in the curriculum to do this. Um, give them some space to do it. And so this could be on Blackboard. It obvi obviously, it could be a journal. It could be a blog. Um, and it could be anything. So whatever sort of makes sense um, for them to do, maybe you're going to give them some suggestions on um, how they can reflect on their work, um, but also give them the option uh, to use a different tool if they'd like. Um, and then decide whether it's important for you to see that um, reflection, um, if the, it's in, or it's something that they just need to keep to themselves. Um, Erica, some more details. Their draft is due exactly one week before the final. So they all have material at that point. Then throughout the week, they can answer the questions through the discussion board and use feedback they get to polish and revise their paper. It works really well for giving them a plan of what to revise and improve. Then they always have plenty of time to sort and chip away at it and reflect. This is a fantastic plan. It is, I can tell you've taken some time to really um, map it out. And um, I hope the rest of us um, take advantage of the way you have this, this structured. It looks really good. Um, and then my final point for um, reflection in this idea of time and space um, is that allow them their own way, their own measure of perfection. It doesn't have to be perfect, um, but you really want it to be honest. And maybe that's why it's something um, that you know you're not necessarily going to share with the whole class um, that will allow them to be more authentic. 
um, and, and critical of themselves. So I have some ideas, um, again, to, on how this reflection um, can be sort of innovated. And one of them is the use of portfolios. Um, it's something that we've been um, really um, exploring more fully. Um, and if, if Stephanie is um, able to, I'd love her to share a little bit more about uh, the portfolio tool that we've been um, using in Blackboard more recently. But you know, giving them, uh, giving students that opportunity um, to collect their work and um, incorporate their um, reflection into it. Stephanie's happy to, so I'm going to turn the mic over to her so she can share some of that with us. Thanks, Tracy. Uh, as she said, I've been working very closely with uh, some of our other staff members here in order to increase the use of portfolios and particularly e-portfolios here at NIU. Uh, portfolios in general is one of the the 10 high impact practices that really can make a difference for students in terms of cementing their learning in a, a deeper way so that they can uh, move forward with uh, being more successful in the workplace, knowing that they, they really do understand and, and can synthesize what they've learned during their university experience. So portfolios, uh, the key, the two key factors are, are both gathering together your best work so that you can review and see again um, what you've built and what you've done throughout your career. And then as Tracy said, reflecting on it so that you not only you might have can identify his audio. Have you lost me? Can anyone else? It looks like everything's hear her? still working. Can anyone hear me? Hello? Okay, Rachel can hear me. Sorry, Tracy, I think it's just you. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was saying that the, the portfolio, it's not only collecting the work, but then reflecting on what you learned in the process, what you might do differently now that you've learned even more, and what it says about you as a, a practitioner, as a professional, or as an academic to have done that work. Um, as Tracy said, building on this idea of the of reflection, self-reflection being an important part of, of feedback for students so it's not all coming from you. Uh, portfolios largely grade themselves. <laughs> if you have, once you've had students put the work together, the activity, the, the purpose is actually for them to reflect. At, so then for you, it's matter, mostly a matter of judging that they completed the requirements and engaged in those reflections. Um, in some cases, portfolios are intended so that you can actually judge their work um, as a comprehensive whole, as opposed to individual artifacts. And in those cases, of course, there's a little bit more of a burden of, of reviewing and grading and giving feedback for you. But it's a, a great way to have students really engage in that, that deep reflection. And then, as Tracy was pointing out, there's a great new portfolio tool in Blackboard I believe it's go.niu.edu slash portfolios is the link. If that doesn't, yep, that's correct. Excellent. Uh, where we have all of the information about the Blackboard tool where students can not only build their own e-portfolio that they can share, but they can also pull in the work that they've submitted in other courses, including all of your great feedback and the rubrics that you wrote. Students can actually um, incorporate that as part of their work in the portfolio to show the, the feedback you gave and then to reflect on perhaps uh, how they interpreted that feedback, what changes they would have made, or what they've done differently since then. So it's it's sort of a feedback meta loop here where by engaging in reflection to self-administer some feedback, students can also include your feedback in that process. If you have questions about portfolios, feel free to, to contact me uh, after the workshop and myself or Yvonne Johnson, our colleague here in the center, will be happy to work with you on how to implement the Blackboard portfolio or other e-portfolio tools in your courses. 
Thank you, Stephanie. And I, I did get most of that. <laughs> Can everyone hear me again? OK, good. <laughs> Um, okay, so the next one is journals. We talked about journals a little bit using the Blackboard journal. Um, but students may also want to um, start keeping their own journals um, similar to portfolio, but um, kind of moving across courses. Um, maybe they're talking about, um, they're keeping a journal about how their semester is going or um, how the courses in their specific discipline are going. And, and so again, I think that if you can encourage your students to be more reflective in their practice, um, that's something that um, will really help them in the long run. And then the final idea is self-scoring. And I think it was Todd that mentioned um, that he has the students um, do some that score themselves against the rubric. And um, if you'd like to share more about how you kind of um, structure that, we'd love to hear from you. Um, but it could be anything. It doesn't necessarily have to be um, scoring themselves off of a rubric. Um, I did mention observations earlier. Um, and maybe it's something more of an observation protocol. Um, where there are certain things that maybe just a checklist that the students can go through to kind of self-score themselves. Um, and really just share that with you too. Um, here's where I think I, I fell and you know here's my, my plan um, to do things maybe a little differently last time. Again, just having them kind of think about their learning on that metacognitive level. Uh, the other feedback I wanted to talk about, um, as I kind of segue into the questions here at the end, um, is um, you also might want to think about how students can give you feedback. So um, that could be um, a check-in, a checkpoint at some point, definitely um, a midterm um, survey of some sort where you're allowing them to give you some sort of um, feedback on um, how things are going, maybe something that's been unclear for them, um, maybe something that you can go over again. Um, and when you're talking about an online course too, it may be feedback on um, something like, um, I'm having trouble finding um, the, a certain type of content. Maybe I'm, I'm always kind of hunting for um, the videos that you suggested. So there's, there's sort of that content and the feedback, and then there's also sort of that online um, structure kind of feedback that you can definitely ask your students um, to make some improvements on. Um, so Todd gave us some more information. He has a rubric for each assignment, and they have peer share days. Oh, I love that. Um, where they evaluate each other's work against the rubric the week before the assignment is due. Then take revisions home and create their final copy for submission. Um, yes, I'm, I'm sure you're seeing the quality of their work um, has improved. Um, and, it, you know, you're really letting them know, too, that they're um, that there's always improvements to be made, um, but when they submit that final work, I'm sure they feel much more confident um, that this is their best work. So I'm kind of opening things up to questions now. Um, questions, thoughts, definitely other ideas you, you've had about um, giving your students feedback. Um, and also I'm really interested in um, you know, what you had hoped to get out of this particular workshop, because it is brand new. Um, so we definitely would um, like it to fit what your expectations were. So what feedback can you give to me? And of course, you can always ask your questions to us if you think of something 
um, later this afternoon, shoot us an email. The other sort of feedback we will be asking for is in our workshop survey. So um, be expecting that in the next couple days. Um, Isabel said, good job. The workshop provided interesting suggestions. Uh, thank you for that evidence. Um, Todd said, I like the idea of ePortfolios and Blackboard. Did not know about that. We'll share with students. Excellent. Um, definitely got something very specific out of that. Um, Autumn learned about interactive rubrics. Um, she was not familiar with that. And it will, it will help your grading um, and your feedback for sure. Um, the other thing we will be providing to you is a link to the archive of this session. And so if you ever want to kind of go back and um, you kind of remember the point and now you'd like to go back and look at the archive, that will also be something that you will be seeing in the next few days. Erica, all the information was useful. Thanks. Thank you, everyone. Um, I've enjoyed our time together this afternoon. Um, I hope you also enjoyed that it was online, uh, being that it's a rainy day. Nobody had to um, try to park and run across campus in this rain. Thank you, Isabel. It's always good to see you, too.